flying equipment and all the extras usually adds 20 kilograms to your naked weight. What does it matter? Well, they say that by loading a given wing with more weight, you will increase all flying speeds, increase stability and get more responsive handling. But is it really true? I tested the effect of adding 20 kilograms to my flying weight on my iSpeak 6. Speeds vary greatly depending on temperature, pressure and altitude, but these two speeds were tested in the same conditions. Adding 20 kilograms increased trim speed by 3 and top speed by 5.6 or 10% speed for 20% weight increase. Adding 4 kilograms of ballast would increase trim speed by no more than 0.8 kilometers an hour and top speed by 1.3 kilometers an hour or 3%. Ballast is cumbersome and upsets your balance. For most pilots it is a waste of energy. It will not make a strong wind day flyable and it makes your carry up a nightmare. What about moving down a size onto a smaller wing? This might increase your speed slightly more than 4 kilograms of ballast. Theoretically, 1.5 kilometers an hour trim speed increase and 2.5 kilometers an hour top speed. But small wings are often less efficient than larger ones, so the speed change is likely to be lower than expected and the glide performance might be degraded. They are sometimes trimmed slower to remove unwanted aggressive reactions. I don't recommend chasing top speed by downsizing. There are more important factors to consider. I'd recommend being well loaded on your wing to reduce the frequency of collapses and increase control authority. But the safety of the wing is determined primarily by the wing design. What you can influence by changing the wing loading within the certified weight range will have little effect by comparison to the passive safety of the wing you choose. There is a broad sweet spot for all wings, which is usually somewhere around 50 to 75% of the quoted weight range. This varies depending on the manufacturer, so it's good to work out your wing loading when comparing. If you fly in strong conditions, strong wind, thermals and tricky launches, you'll get a slight advantage by choosing a wing where you'll be heavily loaded. If you fly in light conditions, soaring the coast, floating downwind on flatland XCs and easy launches, you'll get a slight advantage by choosing a wing where you're lightly loaded. An overloaded wing feels hard and doesn't turn well. Hard pressure, banks too much, loses height, feels like it's grinding around the turn. An underloaded wing feels wobbly, collapses more often in a soft, floppy kind of way, and doesn't turn that well either. Sluggish handling, difficult to turn when thermals push you out. There is an optimum range for best handling, often at 50 to 75% of the weight range. If you're outside of it, the amount of ballast you'd need to carry before your wing handling changes is impractical. What you mostly feel is a counterbalancing effect of a weight below your body, which stabilizes the harness and makes turns less agile. So you must make an effort to choose a wing where you are well placed in the weight range in the first place. Every wing designer has their own idea of the perfect wing loading, which changes depending on their objective for the wing. This makes it hard to know what your ideal wing loading should be. In many cases, you might like a wing design, but be in an uncomfortable place in the overlap between sizes. I don't recommend ballast. I recommend getting the right wing. It might mean looking at another brand. When choosing your next paraglider, narrow it down to those that put you in the right place in the weight range to start with, and identify the ones that give you a wing loading to suit your flying environment. If you're lucky, you can arrange a trial flight on wings in your size so you can feel the handling at its best. For access to a comprehensive demo fleet, contact Flybubble.